my name is Rachel O'Donnell. I'm Senior Artist for MAC Cosmetics. I'm going to talk you through a look for uh, the Nutcracker, which is out this December uh, with the Scottish Ballet. Um, I'm here with the lovely Beth, who's my model today, and my lovely assistant Claire. I've already started a little bit, just on the base and the eyes, and these are the products I've used. A Studio Sculpt Foundation and Pro Longer Concealer, anywhere that you just have a little bit of redness or a little bit that you need to correct around the eyes. Both products are gel formula, really long lasting, so they can stand the test of time on stage. And these are both heavily set with invisible set powder and a little powder poof. I've already used a little bit of a product called Groundwork underneath the cheeks. It's a long lasting product, but I like to always emphasize this a little bit more for stage using a product called Top. It's just a blusher. I'm just using a soft angle brush and I'm going to pop it right under the cheekbone. Just along that. For stage you can use quite a lot. So it really pops out the cheekbones and you don't have to worry so much about blending too much. And I like to frame the face very softly. Right here, tiny bit on the nose. That's all. And then I'm going to pop a little bit of colour on the cheeks next. The, I'm going to use the same brush, 168, but I'm using the colour called Fleur Power, so it's like a little peachy, peachy little pink number all up along the cheekbones. So the Snow Queen is, a, is like a really fun character. She's going to be really glittery and really quite girly. So it's good to have that little pop of pink to begin with so we can understand where she's going to go from now. So I'm going to continue on onto brows and I'm using a, a gel product for brows. It's called Dirty Blonde. If anyone's familiar with our fluid line products, it's very like that, just particular colours for brows. Beth has beautiful brows for stage already, so I'm just going to emphasise them. The Snow Queen is going to have a nice long extension of her brow too. So you can see how that just frames the shape of the eye. I always like to start with the brow and the lashes on so that way you can really see where to put the products, like where you're going to see the products. Sometimes when you do the eyeliners and everything first and then put the lashes on, you can see that you've actually hidden them. So I like to do them first. And I like to just after I do a brow, I just like to brush it just to make sure that the product goes nice and easily through. So Beth's brows were nice and full on the inside, so I mainly put the product on the outside. If your brows are a little bit sparse on the inside, I probably would continue in, in there as well. So now I'm gonna use a product called Groundwork. So this is the initial product that I used um, on Beth's cheeks. And this is gonna just act as a little base on the eyes. So anything that you put on top of groundwork, if it's powder, it'll stay. It, it itself is a really long lasting eyeshadow. And I'm just using a soft fluffy brush as well. Anything that you're comfortable with. This one is a 224. So it just gives the impression of a soft socket. So you're getting the same density almost as you have in the cheeks. So it's just for that initial contour. And now we're going to start with the continuation of those lashes. So we're going to get that initial liner filled in. What I like to do before I put a, a lash on is I'll put a little bit of, like just a messy little bit of liner so you can put the lashes on top of that and then you can extend your line after that and let the lashes guide you to where your flick should be. So I like to do the flick when the eye is open so I can see exactly where it's going and keep it nice and wide. So the product I'm using here is um, a product called Black Black Chroma Line. It's just a gel black, super, super black, really long lasting, waterproof, water resistant, all that crack. And if you close your eyes, I'm gonna continue that all over the lash line. So lots of people prefer to use like different types of liquid liners Whatever works for you really. I've always just used a little angle brush like this 
and the gel liners because I know they really last, especially when you're on stage. And they're a little bit easy to use as well because they've got that angle so you can kind of manipulate the, the shape of the brush. And I just use the little point to really just extend that flick out. So that's our initial flick. I mean, that's basically just like a classic performance look. So you've got that base on. So we're going to do a classic socket line and an eyeliner underneath. But we're going to do it in a, like a kind of a cold colour, so a really bright blue. So if you open up your eyes, again I like to map this out when the eyes are open. So I know I want it to be above the socket line and so that you can see it through the lashes. So I'm just using, um, it's kind of like a flat, it's an eyeshadow brush, it's a flat brush. I like to do it because it, it'll do it quite quick for you, like a, a, an easy socket line. You can perfect it if you want a little bit more afterwards. Close your eyes. So now that I have the initial, I'm just going to continue on and make it a little bit stronger and a little bit thicker. And the product that I'm using is, it's the same um, base as the liner that I've used. It's a chroma line, but this one is called Marine Ultra. So I'm switching up to the under eye now, the under eye liner. And I'm going to change my brush. I find that flatter, bigger brush great for the top, but for underneath it gets a little bit more precise. So I just prefer to change. So this is the same brush that I've used for the eyeliner, it's a 263, just a little angled one. And it's with the same blue product, Marine Ultra. It's really important that you really powder the under eye actually, just so that your product, you can see now that my product isn't blending with my concealer or anything, it really is just true to its colour. That area isn't being powdered, it's just gonna it's just gonna kind of bleed out and it won't stay as well. So now that we've done the kind of rough outline of the eyeliner, I'm gonna put the glitter on now. The glitter is gonna be so all-consuming, the one that goes on the lid. You don't have to worry too much about your shape, not your shape, but like your clean lines or anything like that. So there's a few different products that you can use to stick this glitter on. My favourite is an eyeliner mixing medium. It basically looks like that. It's just a clear thing you can mix anything into or press on top to hold glitter. You can use that or you can use your eyelash glue. The eyelash glue that I use is Duo. So it's just like a white and it turns clear when it's dry so you know when it's fully dry. I'm just going to wash that onto the lid and you just want to do one eye at a time. So like I said, the one that I'm going to use now is the eyeliner mixing medium, so that's the clear one. But as you can see, it doesn't move the eyeliner that I've already put down in place. And then now, this is where the fun starts. I'm going to dip my brush in a pot of 3D silver. And I'm just going to use a flat, firm brush Stick this down. We're really going to go hell for leather with this. Don't worry about what happens when it falls. It's better that you pack it on and make sure it's really stuck. And I'll show you the best way to take it off afterwards. So it's totally fine to get a little bit messy with this. All the way on into the inside and all the way out. And look towards. So super, super glittery, but you can see I've made quite a lot of a mess underneath. It's no big deal. I'll show it in a minute. So the best thing to get glitter off without ruining anything is masking tape or sellotape. Obviously sellotape is probably a little bit stickier, not as 
kind to the skin. So I just use masking tape. It doesn't remove any of the makeup that you've put down because it's such a, um, a soft stick. So this are scotch tape. So you can see that I'm using the line of the actual tape to go around my eyeliner to pick it off on the places that I really want to just get rid of that strong glitter. There's going to be kind of glitter everywhere, but these particles are so big you don't want to be distracting. So we're going to start with the highlighter of the rest of the skin and the eyes. And I'm going to go back to using a fluffy brush, 217, just any sort of fluffy brush really. And I'm using a reflex glitter. So this is a really, really fine glitter. It will just literally stick to what's on. If you want to help it stick even further, you can put a little bit of wash of that um, eyeliner mixing medium if you want to. But it really will just build and stick on itself. So she's a really glittery girl, so she's getting super, super glitter. Normally with highlight and a glitter, especially I would say, dust off what you have in excess. But this, when it drops, is naturally going to catch the highlight that you want. So I'm just going to go with that and just really strengthen it up where you would naturally put your highlighter. So this really does like look like fairy dust when you use it. I'm sure all Beth can see now is twinkle in the air because it kind of is loose and it catches in the air. So the more you build it up, the more kind of wet and metallic it looks. So if you can see, I'm just using the kind of base of my brush just to kind of push in a little bit further really on those high planes. And I'm also going to use just the tiniest, just in the bridge of the nose and on the top of the cupid's bow. The reason why I'm doing quite a lot of emphasis on the high planes is that eventually we want the Snow Queen to look as if she's literally just lifted out of the snow. So she's going to have quite a lot of like glittery snow left on her high planes. So you'll see later we'll do some on the decolletage as well. Different kind of glitter again. Same texture as the last one I've used around um, to highlight, but just a different colour. I'm going to use this on the inside here. So all I want to do is extend this point to really draw focus into the inside. And just because it's got a reflective teal on it, just adds another dimension and another colour. And finally on the eyes, I'm just going to add a little bit of white eyeliner on the inside. So this white eyeliner is just called Fascinating because you look altogether fascinating. So a lot of the glitter has kind of fallen onto the lashes. I don't mind that because she is that kind of glittery kind of creature. If you don't like that, you can always just take off a little bit with a mascara wand or just shake off um, with tissue or something. So to finish off, we're gonna do some lips. For this, we're gonna go for really strong, pretty red lips. So the color I'm using now is called Cherry Pencil. Some people always line their lips, some people don't. I always just think for stage, or in real life actually, if it's a strong colour you're using, you're better off really defining it. And a pencil is the easiest way that you can do that. The lipstick then that I'm going to use is a lipstick called Ruby Woo. It's a really, really matte blue based red. So having that matte effect on the lip is just going to really en enhance all the sequins or the sequins and the glitters everywhere else. Obviously you can just use it from the bullet. My lipsticks are on my little palette. So I just use an eyeshadow brush just so it's really quick for me to put it on. Always make sure to do the corners of your lips. If you think of makeup as a fantasy, especially theatre makeup, if the lips are ever opened in a smile or anything like that or a gesture and you see that gap that becomes in the inside, it just kind of breaks that fantasy. 
Just now that this first layer is dry, I'm going to add a little second layer of Hilo Cut for me, just to really strengthen. You can always use eyeshadow or you can blend it out if you like. I like to do this after the glitter is put on so you can make it really sharp. So what I'm going to do is give a wash of a thing called gel mixing medium, especially all over here. It comes in this big bottle. It's great for dancers or anyone who performs because it's a gel, it's got alcohol in, it will prevent any sweat from breaking the product down, but it's also going to dry in, so it will act like what you're putting on as a powder. I'm going to use two different glitters. The first glitter I'm going to use is the glitter that we've used as the highlight, so that will be a soft wash. So when you think about it, when you're putting things like this on the body, it's again, it's the high planes. So anything that glitter would naturally fall into. And then the second glitter I'm gonna use is just one called silver. The particle is a little bit bigger, so it gives another dimension. I'm just gonna again, quickly put a little bit of wetness on that skin first so it really sticks. You can see I'm not really, like you can be a bit messy about it, it's just about having like a good bit of shimmer and prettiness, but it needs to be a little bit dense here, just above in the kind of crevice of the collarbone. Just some more final touches really. Once everything is settled into the skin. So if you notice, this is a lot stronger here, and it fades up. And that, my friends, is our Snow Queen.